So this is joint work with Dmitry Kavatovich from MSR and Gaetan Laurent from University of Luxembourg. Uh, let me start with cryptanalysis 101. Uh, what do we have when we teach or attend a, a course, uh, intro course in cryptography or cryptanalysis? Well, we hear about differential cryptanalysis, we hear about linear cryptanalysis. Why is that? Well, it turned out that these attack vectors um, were very powerful for many applications since the early 90s. And many different variants have been developed and, and are known. In fact, uh, this design, uh, these attack vectors are so taken so seriously that any new design that wants to be taken seriously in turn comes with some kind of security argument, uh, some proof against classes of those um, attacks. Well, the attack vector that I'm going to talk about today is not of this type. It's a mid-in-the-middle attack. Um, it can be described in a very simple way, at least a high level right here. When looking at a cipher, we have a plain text as input, a cipher text as an output. And in case we are able to separate the key spaces in such a way that we can start from the input, compute forward with some part of the key that is independent of another part, to compute some value v in the forward direction and do the same in the backwards direction, just vice versa, then we can take advantage of a birthday effect and then potentially filter out key guesses faster than in a brute force way. So this is nothing new, that's a very old uh, idea, but it was overshadowed by linear attacks and differential attacks in the last 20 years. This is now slowly changing, maybe because of the um, attack on the lightweight cipher Katantan from 2010. So the outline for the next 19 minutes, first I will briefly discuss the setting. We are talking about block cipher crypto analysis here. Then I will review meet in the middle attacks and show where these, these gaps were in our timeline. Then I will briefly review idea the block cipher we will be analyzing and then describe on uh, attacks on round reduced versions of idea and also on full round idea before I conclude and, and wrap up. So the setting is very simple. We are given a block cipher. Um, the goal is to find a single unknown key. We don't need any related keys, nothing fancy, very simple. Um, also, we, don't, we only ask for the possibility to choose plain text and get ciphertext back, or maybe the other way around. We don't need any adaptivity here. So, in a brute force attack, if we want to find this unknown key with probability one, then we need to try two to the k times, if k is the number of bits in our key. And whenever we find an algorithm that can do this faster, then we, we speak of an attack, roughly speaking. So mid and the middle attacks actually are as old as, as our academic cryptography. It started with the work of, basically of, with the criticism of Diffin Hellman on the, of the differential uh, of the data encryption standard in 97, uh, in 77. They described a simple mid and the middle attack on a version of this when used with two independent keys. A few years later, uh, Merck and Hellman came up with a variant of this to also attack two key triplets in the middle and the middle way. Um, again, a few years later, in 85, Sean Evert were the first to look into the cipher DES and, and uh, perform such a mid and the middle attack there as well. The thing is, DES has 16 rounds. They only managed to cover six or seven rounds. Um, so there was a long way to be gone. And especially afterwards, when differential and linear attacks were developed that managed to cover many more rounds, um, this is probably one of the reasons why this attack vector was overshadowed. Now, on the hash function side, there was also a similar um, applications. Maybe first, uh, Lai Messi found applications of mid-in-the-middle attacks when it came to finding uh, second pre-images in, in generic iterated constructions. Then, for a long time, nothing happened, but in a series of papers from 2008 on, Aoki, Sasaki, and others uh, looked into the compression functions of various hash functions and, and found uh, um, attacks using this attack vector. Most importantly, probably the pre image attack on MD5. Even though it's by far not practical, it's not that much faster than brute force, actually. Uh, but still, it is certainly uh, uh, an important um, step when it comes to crypto analysis. Uh, I give the example of Tiger here as well that I did with Google and others because uh, Tiger. We don't have an efficient collision attack for it, even though for MD5 we have one, but still 
this attack vector led to uh, first uh, attacks on Tiger as well, which is a hash function that also withstood script analysis for more than 10 years. So then, as mentioned in the beginning already, we started to look into applying this newly found attack vector, or rediscovered attack vector, if you want to block ciphers again. And we found a victim, the lightweight cipher Katantan. And, and the meanwhile, attacks are already almost down to 2 to the 70, um, showing that this is something to be taken seriously. But it was still a very simple um, attack. Uh, recently, we introduced this framework around mid and the middle attacks that um, allows uh, more sophisticated um, techniques to be applied as well under the umbrella of, of big click attacks. First, applied in the hash function setting, SHA-2 and SCAN were our first um, targets, well, reduced versions of it. And more recently, um, we looked at AES as well, and um, the, our results last year uh, received some attention because we also had results on the full AES. And now, as a follow-up, we look at IDEA and have more results on this as well. And this is some of the, the context of my talk. The big click approaching in a single slide, well, it is um, a formalization of the idea of Aoki Sasaki that first found applications in MD5, where they managed to squeeze out more rounds in a mid and the middle attack than was thought to be possible before. The, the beauty of uh, this approach is that we can suddenly use tools from from differential cryptanalysis in our mid and the middle attacks. Um, we can speak about differential characteristics trails, we can use neutral bits, rebound techniques, all the things that we developed in, in recent years when it came to hash cryptanalysis, actually. And so far, it was mostly used to squeeze out more rounds in our attacks. So let me talk about IDEA. It's a very old block cipher, relatively speaking, designed by Lai Messi and published in, in 91 as a 64-bit block size, 128-bit keys. It's quite widely implemented and resists a lot of cryptanalytic attention, only if at all second to the AES or, or the DES. More than 20 research papers. Um, since the early 90s, improving results, uh, having results on more and more rounds. But still, the best uh, result so far from Azure Crypt 2009 by Sun and Lai is a result on the first five rounds. Um, it's not that much faster than brute force, 2 to the 1, 25.5, and needs about um, a megabyte data. IDEA has this property that if instead of first rounds, middle rounds are chosen, then the cipher becomes weaker. That's why um, in this setting, six rounds can be attacked um, as well. Um, I will keep the talk at the level where we don't need um, details of the Cypher, but I wanted to show you this round transformation anyway, just to give you a, a brief idea. So this is the, the input of our round, 64 bits, split up into 16 words. The operations that are used in IDEA are um, XOR, modular addition, and multiplication modular 2 to the 16 plus 1. So these are incompatible group operations, and the security is basically um, drawn from, from this mix of these incompatible operations. And this uh, round is now iterated eight times, and then one last time we have a, a, another key addition layer. So far, five rounds were the best. In order to illustrate the, the power of this Bigly concept that, that we apply for the first time to IDEA, I'm starting with um, a rather new uh, result that was first announced at the Crypto RUM session last year by Biham Shami and others, where they also applied this mid and middle attack vector. Um, for up to six middle rounds of idea. So the illustration is, is very similar to what we had before. We find some way to separate uh, the key into key spaces such that a small part of the key space is independent of some part of the cipher execution uh, in both directions. Then we just start from a plain text cipher text pair, compute in both directions, and look for a match. And this then in turn we use to filter out key guesses. And one variant of, of this approach uh, gives a time complexity of 2 to the 123, so somewhat faster than brute force, and only needs two plain text cipher text pairs. So this was basically a state of the art last summer. What we can do now is to immediately add one and a half more rounds without uh, essentially not touching the time complexity or with this big click approach. So we have 
or rounds one and a half until five and a, uh, until seven and a half years. That was the the part of the cipher that was that was attacked so far. And it turns out that um, this big construction that we are using can cover the first one and a half rounds. So this gives us basically the same time complexity for the attack. Um, the problem is the data complexity. So after we, we saw this um, six round result, it took us only a few hours to come up with this very first um, huge step uh, towards full idea for seven and a half rounds. But then the hard work started because we were not happy with the fact that um, the attack suddenly needs uh, huge, huge data. So we were working on trying to reduce it. So why do we have um, this high data complexity, actually? Well, first, let me illustrate you how this big kick helps us in order to squeeze up more rounds. Um, so in our mid and middle attack, we look for all possibilities of KF in one direction or possibilities of the bits in KB in the other direction. Then we look for a match. And let's assume we find a match where uh, the, this choice um, was matching with this choice. Um, so what we are now basically facing is the challenge of somehow connecting the, our internal states that, that we somehow started with um, via the plaintext input to the ciphertext that we have to match. And this big structure allows us to do exactly that. So the, the problem is finding such a, a structure where we map um, keys, plaintext inputs, and um, internal states in such a way that gives us this property is, is highly non-trivial. Actually, if these rounds behave in any way random, uh, this structure is highly unlikely to exist at all. But for a small number of rounds, one or two rounds, this is something that can be constructed. The thing is, we need to construct this very efficiently because this is happening in our inner loop. Um, but there are amortization effects that allow us to do exactly that. So that's why the time complexity is essentially untouched. So why do we have this high data complexity? Well, the thing is, for all those the white parts here, those key bits that are not used in the mid and middle attack, um, we need to guess them. And for every guess, we need to construct a new big kick. Um, in the concrete attack of this seven and a half round idea, it's about 100 bits. So we need to do this two to 300 times. And this gives us um, well, more and more big clicks. But also, we cover basically, we cannot avoid covering the, the complete uh, plain text space for this. This means that's the reason why we need almost a full codebook for our attack. And that's now where the conceptual contribution um, comes from. So we um, extend the big click framework by something we call narrow big clicks, where we address this problem. The, the new trick is here that uh, we use the degrees of freedom that we have in this big click um, area, such that we can construct internal states that fits together with the concrete key case that we have at this very moment, such that the resulting plain texts um, collide on, on, an, on a number of bits. And the more bits that collide, the lower the data complexity will be. And this is something that resembles collision attacks and hash functions a lot, actually. They are also we don't have a key. Um, and we need to somehow construct uh, pairs that have certain properties. Why we don't have a key here? is that, well, we have to construct this for every key guess. So whenever we construct this big click, we, we know the key, because that's just the one that we are currently guessing. So that's why we draw heavily from tools that we developed earlier in, in hash script analysis. The thing is, I won't go into the details here. Um, this is, can be very complicated. Um, the details are in the paper, and in order to get more confidence in the results of, uh, that we obtained, we practically verified them. That's something that is uh, pretty important. Um, to give you an idea of the impact of this narrow um, extension of the BigLeak framework, I list here um, a few attacks that we um, obtained. So an attack for the first five rounds. The five rounds was so far the, the highest number of rounds that were attackable. We have a time complexity of 2 to the 101.5. That's much faster than everything that existed before. And with this narrow a big leak technique, we reduce the data complexity from something that is close to the full code book to 2 to the 25. Then with a higher number of rounds, these are all um, versions of idea that haven't been attacked before. The uh, time complexity increases, and then the data complexity increases as well. This seems intuitive. It's actually 
not, well, it's actually a bit of a coincidence because um, these are all different attacks with different key space separations and so on, and there could also be non monotonous um, behavior of this kind of, of, of complexities. Here, I give only those results that minimize time complexity. In the paper, we have, we have more on that. Okay, so we have now seven and a half rounds. That's already pretty close to the full idea. The idea has eight and a half rounds, so one more round to go. We tried to find a text that would cover the full idea in this way, but we didn't manage. Um, but what we can do, that's something the big click attack vector allows us to do, is to introduce a small brute force phase into the attack. And indeed, again, designing a new attack with new sets of KF and KB and so on, and the new methods to construct big clicks. Um, the new bottleneck of the attack then becomes, or at least the brute force phase that needs to cover one round, uh, contributes to the time complexity. And the new time complexity is then um, 2 to the 126, still a bit faster than brute force, but now suddenly we can make a statement about full idea for the first time. Putting this into the table again, I give now here two variants. Again, it becomes more difficult, but still we can lower the data complexity a bit to 2 to the 52, for example, and the time complexity is roughly uh, four times faster than, than brute force in, in our model. So let me conclude. I think we show two main contributions in, in this paper. First is a variety of new uh, results on idea that uh, seem like a, a sudden jump in, uh, in crypto analysis. It, it, it took us almost 20 years to start from one, two, up to five rounds, and suddenly we have attacks on seven and a half rounds, and even full idea if we consider this trick with the brute force phase as an attack as well. Um, so after our realization that we can immediately gain one and a half rounds with this big trick, um, uh, Beham and others uh, also updated uh, their work, and they now complement our results in a, in a nice way. They consider not only initial rounds, but also middle rounds. Sometimes they um, minimize data complexity, whereas we are minimizing uh, time complexity. So I warmly recommend to study this paper as well if you are interested in the state of the art in idea. Secondly, not only have, do we have these, all those detailed results, we also add a new tool to the toolbox for the crypto analysts. This is something that uh, will find applications to other ciphers as well. Something else that I would like to point out is that so far, the big click attacks we saw on AES and on, on other constructions are all very close to brute force. Here in this paper, for the first time, what we have is actually a demonstration that this is not necessarily the case. We have um, variants of, of our attacks that are many million times faster than, uh, than brute force. And if you ask now, what does it mean? Um, for full idea, is it broken? Well, if you like to think that uh, yes, it's broken because of our results of last year, then I'm sorry to say that it's the same for idea. It's about the same um, security that we get, 126 bits. Um, well, for practical purposes, it's a very secure cipher still. It's just, our results just show that we still can make progress with, with new attack vectors. So last but not least, let me talk a little bit about open problems and future work. Well, the big attack vector itself um, came already from, from hash crypt analysis and was applied to software crypt analysis. Now, the, the new tools that we uh, used and developed for this particular result, again, draw a lot from the know-how that we obtained in hash crypt analysis in recent years. So there may well be more um, techniques around that will find applications to cipher crypt analysis as well. When it comes to finding new targets for mid and middle attacks and big click attacks, there may well be other surprises uh, lurking, not only idea. Um, and last but not least, it seems we are uh, seeing an emergence of a, a new sub-discipline of, of crypt analysis that one could call brute force-like crypt analysis. Um, let's say, we want to implement a brute force attack on a, on a cipher that has a key space that is not too large, let's say 80 bits. So far, uh, statements about the cost of such an attack were purely in the realm of, of, of implementers, basically. But now, with this combination of brute force-like uh, crypto analysis and, and big click attacks, 
uh, suddenly cryptanalysts can help there as well and can squeeze out uh, speed ups that were simply not possible before with simple um, implementation tricks. Um, for ciphers with 128-bit uh, keys or even more, this remains an, more of an academic um, discussion, but for key sizes of 80 bits or less, this can have very practical impacts actually and can even save lots of energy in our data centers if we want to find uh, keys in a brute force way. Um, ciphers like um, present come to mind or also the 64-bit version of Kasumi is a very interesting target in this respect. Yeah, with that, I'm done. Thanks a lot for your attention. Do we have questions? Okay, so maybe I, I could add, do you see any chances of, of uh, making it better than brute force? I mean, integrating some techniques. I mean, it seems that your con con conclusion is that big click attacks are basically uh, smart brute force attacks. But uh, well, this is only part of my conclusion, really. Um, for reduced versions, what we show is that uh, big click attacks can be many times faster than brute force search, even a million times faster. Key schedule you need to... Exactly, yeah. yeah less, less key bits. You yeah. Mm -hmm. But in some sense, um, IDEA is also resistant against this kind of advance of attacks because we do need this brute force space. We still squeeze out a factor four, which is certainly not, not negligible, but that's as far as we can go at the moment, yeah. But improvements might be possible. So, no other questions? Okay, let's thanks. thank Christian again. Okay.